Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in Freshman English and we continue now our introductory comments and study at the beginning of Unit 4 on Poetry. I'm with you on page 612 and we're going to look now for just a moment at the Emily Dickinson text, We Grow Accustomed to the Dark. Now we're going to say more about Emily Dickinson later and we'll say a lot about Emily Dickinson here in your junior year. She's such an important American poet. Let's just turn now to the information as they give it to us at the top of 612 about the text. The American poet Emily Dickinson, write down the dates, 1830 to 1886, wrote more than 1,700 brief poems that sparkle with wit and intelligence. She's known for a stylistic use of punctuation, write that down, especially exclamation points and dashes, and she often capitalized words within sentences to give them added emphasis. Let's play a game now as well with the sidebar information of 10, 11, 12, and 13. We'll want to pay attention to that as well. All right, here we go. Let's read the poem together and annotate. We grow accustomed to the dark, and notice that the first line of any Emily, any Emily Dickinson poem is always going to be its title, all right? Let's read together. We grow accustomed to the dark when light is put away, as when the neighbor holds the lamp to witness her goodbye. A moment, we uncertain step with newness of the night, then fit our vision to the dark and meet the road erect. And so of larger darkness, those evenings of the brain, when not a moon disclose a sign or star come out within, the bravest grope a little and sometimes hit a tree directly in the forehead. But as they learn to see, either the darkness alters or something in the sight adjusts itself to midnight and life steps almost straight. Notice at number 10, Dickinson word choice and connotation. Dickinson creates a contrast between darkness, which is associated with fear and death, and light, which is associated with seeing or understanding. See, and you can write down now your annotations already at level 1 and 2b. At number 11, the figurative language, Dickinson uses metaphor to speak of figurative darknesses. These metaphors suggest periods of great sadness or depression. At number 12, rhyming. The rhyming words help shape the structure of the stanzas. They support the idea that this experience is a regular occurrence. And finally, at number 13, figurative language, the metaphor continues. The bravest people struggle through sadness and sometimes get hurt but adjust and come to grips with their experiences. Let's turn to the poem now and do a quick annotation of the poem as we are trying to introduce ourselves to the poetics of it all. Right? Notice she begins by saying, we, meaning all humans, grow accustomed to the dark when light is put away. At first, when darkness hits us and we are accustomed to the light, we freak out. But slowly, we grow accustomed. Put it in your notes. Notice how she begins with the most simple of experiences to go from having light to darkness and we quickly grow accustomed to it we get used to it as when the neighbor holds the lamp to witness her goodbye right in other words see you in a while a moment we uncertain step for newness of the night then fit our vision to the dark and meet the road erect in other words we start out in uncomfortable situations feeling I'll never get over this. By the way, jot down, why do you think they put this poem for a bunch of freshmen who are starting out their high school experience? Self-evident, right? When you start out new experiences, it's natural to kind of be freaked out. It's natural to kind of feel like you're in the dark, if you will, right? But, so of larger darkness, those evenings of the brain, let's put it in our notes, the sadness, the moments when we're in the dark emotionally, we're not happy, we're not pleased with the way our life is going. It's like being in the dark. When not a moon disclose a sign or star come out within, the bravest grope a little. We think about all the reading we've done already in freshman English that really does kind of show you. Think about that Carl Sandburg um, section about Lincoln and how he said how hard it was for Lincoln to live through those especially final four years of his life and the American Civil War, right? Even the bravest people grope a little, struggle a little, and sometimes they hit a tree directly in the forehead. We think of 
the classic, it's 3A, the classic text that you'll study in your junior year, a red badge of courage about a young man who in the middle of the battle turns and runs and whack right into his forehead, knocks himself, right? But as they learn to see, either the darkness alters or something in the sight adjusts itself to midnight in life. Steps. Almost. you got to love the word almost. Almost straight. All right, let's finish at level 2A. What does she say? She says two things. One, we all struggle with living in the light and then losing the light and darkness arrives. It's all for all of us. It's, it's, it's a problem. New experiences challenge us. New challenges come with a new kind of pain and a sense of pain. Number two, she says, however, we find ways to get through. Those who grieve the passing of someone they love, there will come a time when finally it gets better and you can live through it. That's the nature of what it means to be human. We find a way to associate, to get, to get right with the darkness, no matter how, tar no matter how hard it is. At 2B, we've already mentioned a number of things here, right, in terms of different techniques that are being used, those powerful kinds of figurative language, the metaphor of light and darkness. Light is certainty. Darkness is, I just don't know. At 3A, let's play this game really quickly. What is for you the song that convinces you you got to keep going even when the darkness is? You can't quit just because life it's hard, and you got to find a way to get through. What's your favorite video game that teaches that truth? What's your favorite movie that teaches that truth? Finally, at 3B, we can ask this question. Can you remember the darkest moment of your life? And write that down really quick. What was the darkest moment of your life? And how did you grow accustomed to that dark? In other words, how did you get through? Maybe you're not quite through yet, but prior experiences help you to be able to find a way to get through. Well, there you go. The great Emily Dickinson, we grow accustomed to the dark. We look forward to more poems by this great poet. Thank you.